What's up, Meta Nerds? This video is about the Eta class supply barge, or as a lot of people in the comments called it in the last video, the Zeta class's big brother. That is a pretty accurate way to describe this ship, and though there are zero official stats, we can deduce a lot about the Eta from what we see on screen, and some of the details we have about the Zeta. At first glance, you might think that these orange containers are the same ones that we see on the back of the TX-225 occupier tank, but it is much more likely that these are the cargo containers that were used by the Zeta class. This cross-section shows how the big Zeta container is filled with those smaller containers we see on the tank, with six on this side, so I'm thinking somewhere around 24 in total. If we go back to the Eta, we can try and figure out how many containers it had in total, which could also be expressed as how much more cargo the Eta can carry than the Zeta. On top we have 20, and this bottom row has 15, and I think that there are three rows on the ventral side, given how much closer these are to the edge, though it could be pushed out to the sides to make room for landing gear, so that there was something supporting the midsection, but let's just go with three rows on the bottom. That gives us 45 containers on the ventral side, for a grand total of 65 times the carrying capacity of the Zeta. This would give it a max cargo capacity of 1,625 tons, meaning that if it wasn't full of kyber crystals, and instead went big game hunting on Tatooine, it could haul the weight of 2,015 dubaks. Coming up with the dimensions of this ship is a bit trickier, and we will again rely on its little brother, but to do it right, I have to point out a funny little discrepancy between the design of the Zeta and how it had to be shown on screen. The coloration of this section, and the way that it's shown to operate, clearly implies that the orange section is all the container, and the gray part is the rest of the ship, but this ended up leaving no room for the passengers, so later cross-sections art made after all the scenes were shot for Rogue One, had to give room for all of those rebels, so the cargo area had to be shrunk down, but this whole passenger area was still painted orange, though clearly this would have just been painted dark gray like the rest of this ship, and this section of the bottom deck. So realizing that we shouldn't measure all of the orange area, just this cargo section, we get a length of 9.86 meters, and since we know it is as wide as the hole, it is 8.53 meters wide. So if we head back to our Eta, remember the orientation of the containers is now sideways, but we can do the numbers and get a length of 85.3 meters for the dorsal cargo area, for a total length of 265.4 meters, or 870 feet. This would put it in between a Raider class Corvette like the Corvus, and a Arquidens class light cruiser. I think we can be reasonably confident in this figure, given how big it looks when passing through the Scarif shield gate. By keeping our assumption that it is three containers wide, the hull would be about 29.58 meters, but by using the hull width to overall width ratio of the Zeta, if we include the wings in their bulky servo motor assemblies, we get 67.62 meters, or 222 feet. This would make it more than two Jabba sail barges across, and you could use this as a nice platform to land your four LAAT gunships. Using these numbers, we get a total height from container to wingtip at 79.77 meters, or 232 feet, making it more than three times the height of the AT-AT. As for its top atmospheric speed, I wouldn't be surprised if it had the same speed as the Zeta at 1,000 kilometers per hour, since a lot of ship stats are in this ballpark area, despite some massive size differences, with things like the X-Wing and the Venator only having a 75 km per hour difference. And we shouldn't think it's too slow, since we do see that it has these pair, or should I say twin ion engines, so maybe we can consider it a big old TIE Fighter cargo variant. Its hyperdrive, however, is something that I'm a bit conflicted on. I can see two arguments here. One is that the ship was used like a central hub, with tons of walkers, tanks, and other shuttles like the Zeta, collecting resources from all across the planet, filling up this one massive supply barge, and then this single ship would fly through hyperspace to some far-off destination. But I could also see it being transported within Star Destroyers, since it doesn't appear to have any weapons, definitely no room for its own complement of ships, and TIE fighters can't escort it through hyperspace, since they don't have hyperdrives, so it could be a bit risky to pack on so much valuable cargo, and then just send it through hyperspace alone. Be sure to write in the comments section which of those scenarios you think makes the most sense, but I lean more towards the first scenario, where it has its own hyperdrive, since I don't know where this ship would dock in an Imperial Star Destroyer. Even the CR-90 was 100 meters shorter than this, and I think as long as the Edo was only being used on heavy Imperial-controlled mining locations, and then directly jumping to other heavily secured Imperial locations, then it would never be caught out alone in the most dangerous parts of space, and it's not like pirate gangs or rebels have their own interdictor star destroyers to rip this cargo ship out of hyperspace. 
As for its history, it was instrumental in the stripping of Jeddah's kyber crystals, making it one of the most important ships in the supply lines that helped to build the Death Star. Why they were seen in such great numbers on Scarif was because this tropical world wasn't just the galaxy's most secured library, but there were tons of different research labs carrying out their own projects, in addition to the Tarkin Initiative researchers that were stationed at Idu. So that's it for the Eta class supply barge, but most important of all, remember, this is the perfect heist scenario for your next Star Wars role-playing game, and the Force will be with you. Always.